Welcome to Let's DIY My Home, where like-minded people are working together to tackle your project. Everything from a complicated remodel to as simple as repairing a door. That's Let's DIY My Home dot com. We'll see you there. We're talking about steel siding. Last week we talked about vinyl. We talked about the pros. We talked about the cons. Today it's the steel. Steel honestly is one of my favorites. If I had one product to sell and, all, and that's all I was going to sell, it would be steel. One, I think it looks better. I think it's more professional looking. And oh my goodness gracious, you guys are about to see some photos that are going to blow your mind. What they have actually been able to do with this product is on believable today we have steel siding that looks like wood i am not kidding you wood it's got the wood grain in it we're talked about the three pros and the three cons we're going to bounce into that pro number one environmentally responsible i'm big on recycling it's taken me a long time to move over that way, but I've become very conscious of the products I use. I've become very conscious of the products that we sell. Okay, I want to make sure that it's helping protect the environment for our children, yours as well as mine. Steel. I love steel. For the most part, most manufacturers on steel today are using recycled metal. Fantastic and it's also recyclable. The other thing about steel is because they use products like Kevlar uh, finishes on them, it allows it to reflect the heat so it doesn't penetrate into the house. If we're tearing off wood siding on a house and we're gonna put steel on, you better put some type of insulation behind it because holy moly, you will notice a difference. See, wood has an R value to it. It's only like an R1, or an R2, depending on what you have, but it is an R value. You see, steel, zero. Metal is a conductor of cold. If you don't believe me, and you're in the northern states, go lick that light pole when it's 30 below zero. I guarantee you, you're gonna find out how steel react. And that's part of why products like Kevlar, part of why Sherman Williams has come out with finishes that reflect the heat to try to bring up some energy efficiency to it to help uh, keep the house cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. I still say we need to insulate behind them. Pro number two, looks. Now I've been just talking about looks today a little bit because we've been able to emulate the wood. We've been able to emulate steel. We've been able to uh, emulate steel, hell it is steel. We've been able to emulate uh, uh, subway tile appearances, okay? We can emulate wood shakes. We can emulate wood shingles. We've now been able to emulate an asphalt shingle even with steel. It has come so far along, it's unbelievable. Standing seams roofs, okay, corrugated panels. We can now do modern looks to homes that once upon a time was not even an option. You know, my brother lives downtown Chicago and uh, some of them homes are absolutely beautiful. I'm not into the, I'm more of the country house type of guy, but for those that like the more modern, sleek, uh, uh, commercial building type look, you can pull it off today. Number three, steel. It is seamless. You, or it's not all seamless. Let me rephrase that. You have the ability today to do seamless. In other words, you can run a panel out that is 60 feet long, 70 feet long, and talk about a house that looks straight as an arrow. We install seamless. It doesn't matter if I'm doing seamless or box steels. We hang a string line from one corner of the house to the other. Any ideas why we do this? The true of it is, is that way we can see if there's any bows in the wall, we can now pull the panel out. When we install steel siding, we screw it on. Now, I saw a couple of YouTube videos out there where people were using a, something like a sheetrock screw. Bad, bad idea. Don't do that. Um, if you're going to choose to screw your siding on, which you can, use a stainless steel screw, okay, that is designed for that application. You need a big head on them. Otherwise, you took a product that had a 180 mile an hour wind warranty, and it may only be good for 80 now because you didn't have a head big enough to hold uh, uh, where the nail fin is on the product. So be cautious in what you're doing and how you're doing it. 
Steel siding like vinyl, you want to leave a little bit of room for expansion and traction when you install this. My goodness gracious. One of the things that I like about steel, vinyl's come a long way. Vinyl has a lot of darker colors available today that were never available before. But they're not. You don't have the dark color options that you can get in steel. Whether it's lap siding. Edco, I noticed when I was on their forum today doing a little bit of research, they still use a PVC finish. I don't want PVC on my steel siding. I have no faith in it. As far as I'm concerned, any steel siding that has a PVC finish on it, eh, down the road it goes. Don't even purchase it because there's a very good chance. I mean, the fact is anything that's man-made can fail. When they have a track record to where it's constantly becoming an issue, that's a big issue for me. Supposedly, Edco has changed the painted enamel today over a PVC finish. Our cars are painted. We have clear coats on them. We have different finishes on them to make the paint last. Today with siding, uh, we use products like Kevlar, okay, which reflects the heat. Sherman Williams has their own top coat that reflects the heat, that prevents the sun from making or allowing that panel to flake, peel, and blister. So, and then we bake it on with an enamel. The paint never fails. It's usually the top coat that will fail. You'll notice when we talk about steel siding, very much like vinyl, you've got your traditional laps. You've got Dutch lap, regular lap, four inch, five inch, six inch, eight inch. Okay, and even a 12 inch panel that's available. You also have it in vertical. You have it as a, I believe it was a seven, eight and a 12 in a vertical panel. You have it available in shakes shingles. You have it available to where it looks like an asphalt shingle. So there's lots and lots of options. It's endless on what you can do with steel siding. Steel siding has come so far, folks. It's unbelievable. You got to see these. Talk about the Vista plank siding. Holy buckets. It looks like wood grain. Okay. We used to take a, a redwood. We would install redwood siding when somebody wants to finish like this on a modern home on that style of a house. And then we'd go take black paint, paint the board, and then wipe it off, okay, to get this look to it. Now we're doing it in metal. We're doing it with seamless products. Kudos to Quality Edge is all I can say on that one, because when I saw that, I went, holy mackerel. That's something to be proud of. And right now, Quality Edge, to my knowledge, is the only one that can pull that, that one off. Here's an Edco Shake product. The old days, we do wood shakes. You know, I built a lot of or worked on a lot of multi-million dollar homes around like up here is Lake Minnetonka. And we installed a lot of shingles, a lot of cedar shingles and a lot of cedar shape. And there's such thing as number one cedar, number two cedars. The quality isn't the same as what it was back then. And today we've come out with, I'm not a fan of vinyl cedar and shakes, okay? Do as you want, okay? You do you and I'll do me. But I'm telling you right now, don't do vinyl cedar and don't, vinyl cedar shakes or shingles. Uh, they're up in the soffit ends most of the time like you see in here. For some reason, there's a severe issue with the deformation, expansion, and retraction. Talking about that for a second here, I gotta stop. I am dumbfounded with the folks down south. The lack of education. South Carolina, North Carolina, Florida, Mississippi, Texas. You guys will sell vinyl siding all day long. You can get it at Home Depot. You can get it at Lowe's. You can get it at your local hardware stores or lumber yards. That stuff deforms at 165 degrees. That's right. 165 degrees, it'll start deforming. You can put your thumbprint in it. And you down there have 100 plus and weather temperatures. There is no reason in man's kind that vinyl siding is sold down there. Shouldn't even be on the market down there. But yet you go into the stores and you ask for steel siding. What's that? What? I searched for five hours today trying to find pricing on steel down in North Carolina and Mississippi. I finally ended up finding a couple places. Quality Edge is in North Carolina. They have a, a right along the coastline down there. There's a quality edge store down there. I did find it there. I also found it uh, uh, in Mississippi, but where I'm at, I can go to any lumber yard and pick it up. 
It's here. Down south, they don't even know what it is. And I would think steel would be their primary panel for the consumer down there, not vinyl. They sell more vinyl down there than they do anything. Okie dokie is all I can say about that. You know what, guys? I'm interrupting real quick because if you're getting value out of this thing and you're enjoying this and you're learning some things, smack that subscribe button. That's what's going to make this channel grow. Next week, oh my goodness, we're going to be talking about Hardee's. And some folks out there are diehard Hardy fans. They believe that's the best product in the world. You're going to need to be here to see it because holy moly. All right, let's get back to the show. Here's Quality Edge again. You got the cedar shakes up in the gables. You got vertical, okay? You can get vertical panels up to 12 feet, then do a nice band across the top and continue with another uh, 12 feet if need be. And it would look good. You have it available through Rolex. You can actually order it with an insulated backer. Great product, great thermal break. I actually like that because it's actually making, you know, wood has an R value, steel doesn't. Steel's a conductor of cold, folks. This way, that is actually warmer than what wood is. When we put steel on older homes, I try to do my best not to tear the siding off. Okay, let's get into the cons. All right, con number one, it's not bulletproof. You can dent it. You're running around with a lawnmower, it'll throw a lock, rock. You can very much put a dent in it. You get a big hailstorm coming down here with a driving wind, you're gonna get dense. And there's nothing you can do. But let me assure you this, I will take dents any day of the week than holes that happen to a vinyl siding. It will blow holes right through it your substructure is now open to the environment when you have vinyl on it. That's another major con against vinyl. I'll take the dents. I can get them fixed. I can just no different than my car. When it gets a dent, I take it to the shop. I get it repaired. Bingo. Guess what? The storm hit it. I get on the phone, call the insurance company. Boom. I get my siding fixed. But at least my structure isn't open to the environment as it would be with vinyl in the same storm. Does that make sense? All right, con number two, steel does rust. If you're thinking steel and you live along the coast of the ocean, do not, do not put steel on your house. Salt plays hell with steel. Salt loves to eat steel. It will rust. You cannot prevent it. Other things, you decide you put this on your house. Steel is not user friendly. Okay, steel is not, as far as I'm concerned, uh, unless you got a construction background, is not DIY friendly at all. Steel is extremely hard to get the panels to lock into each other. And unless you have a helping hand, uh, because today they're painted finishes, you can very much scratch the hell out of your wall. So DIY friendly, it is not. You need to have experience. You need to know what you're doing. You can do it, but the other part of it, cons, I'm gonna give you a few more cons here, okay? Because one I didn't put on the list, it's not DIY friendly and I should have. The other con is cost. Vinyl siding today runs about average 225 for material a square, 225 a square with all your accessories. Steel today is gonna run you about 350 somewhere in that vicinity and depending on what you pick for a product it can go up to 500 a square the average house today is 20 let's just call it 25 square so if it's five if your cost in material is 500 dollars a square that's 15 grand can be easily a material cost of 15 grand 10 to 15 grand overall for most homes today though honestly if you pick regular lap you're probably going to be looking at material costs somewhere around the 8,000. That's soffit, fascia, and siding. Okay. I love aluminum siding. I love, I mean, sorry, aluminum soffit, not siding. Um, I prefer aluminum soffit over vinyl soffit any day of the week. I've seen it droop and I've seen it fail. Cost. Insulation. See, I've already jumped ahead of myself again. We talked about insulation. Wood is a ins wood has R value. Steel does not. No R value to steel. You need to put insulation behind it. 
If you're going to tear off your old siding, I don't care if you put half inch insulation, foam board, ISO board, whatever, all over the house, that will be way more than what the wood ever was. That's going to give you the best return on your investment that you would ever imagine. Again, one of the other reasons I say it's not DIY friendly is because you cannot and you should not cut it with a skill saw. I sit here and I watch some of these YouTube videos and I, and I just cringe when I see this. One, most manufacturers just voided the warranty. You spent that kind of money on siding and you got zero on a warranty. You may not have to worry about it this year. You may not have to worry about it for 10 years. But I assure you, because of the way you cut it, you burn the edge, you left it open to the uh, environment, and you're done. It will rust. Okay, it will become an issue. You either have to use a guillotine is what we call them, or power shears for cutting them. Or you can use tin snip. I prefer a guillotine and that's what we use. You know, it's just a big lever and it just snaps down and cuts it and it rolls the edge. And it just keeps it sealed and there's no chance of burning it. But again, you're talking about a tool that's a thousand dollars. So unless you're planning on doing a lot of steel siding, it's not feasible for you to purchase these things. And that's why I say again, this is not a DIY product. Let's talk about cost. I only found one big box store that actually sells steel. Menards, okay. And actually Menards, uh, they own the metal plant up in Wisconsin. I forget where it's at, but that's where their corporate office is. And they make their own steel. They make a lot of their own products now. So we can compare apples to apples. 2770 normally without the 11% rebate. With the rebate, it's $24. I don't really care. I use the $27.70 because that's a realistic number. When you go to purchase it, there may not be a rebate. There may not be a sale. So that's really what it is. We're not talking about a sale price. We're talking retail. When you go into the Menards website and you pick steel siding, they have a calculator underneath there. And if you put in 10 foot by 10 foot, which is 100 square feet, it'll tell you it needs 13 panels for that 100 square feet. That's $360.10. If you go to a wholesaler, you can actually purchase the product for $249. That's right, well over $100 a square less buying from a wholesaler than the big box store Menards. Menards is making a killing on this stuff. The Menards loves DIYers. I'm just trying to tell you how to get the stuff cheaper. You want to be a DIYer? More power to you. I recommend it. There's forms. There's, we're here to help you. Most people aren't able to do that. You can go to ABC or you can go to Beacon. Beacon used to be, well, Beacon purchased Allied Building Products. Allied Building Products is a nationwide company. So is ABC. I don't know that Beacon will sell to the public. Allied did occasionally, but now that it's owned by Beacon, I would have to call and find out. But I do know ABC will. So. There you go, folks. Three pros, three cons. That price back here at two forty nine. That is from ABC. I mean ABC Supply. Right there. Go Google them. Give them a call. Most likely, there's a store nearby you. Even in North Carolina, I did find out you can call ABC Supply, and the folks that are down there in North Carolina and the Southern states, some of them are going to scratch their head. Steel siding. We don't have it. We only sell vinyl in Hardy. Tell them to call their corporate office and ask for steel for the accessories. So you're going to want to make sure you order that product as close as possible. I will be doing a video on how to measure a house for siding coming up as well. That's about four videos out. So it's next month. I mentioned in the vinyl siding, I would give you guys a cheat sheet. For the people that have ramblers, if you measure length and width, that gives you your square footage. And if it happens to be it's 800 square feet, that's called eight squares of siding. This cheat sheet that I will get uploaded 
So keep an eye out. I'm going to get it added. I'm going to have to go find my hard copy and scan it because I can't find my digital copy storage bin and give you guys the link to where you can download it. That thing will tell you eight squares of siding will equal. You'll need so many corner posts. Now, when we get to corner posts, corner posts are also 12 feet long. I tell you to go walk around the house. If you got a rambler and it's just square, well, that's four corner posts and it's 20 something squares. It could be that program is probably going to tell you you need six corner posts when reality is you don't. So take account. I use it strictly for uh, uh, all my J channels and finish trim and stuff like that. Corner posts and starter, I can go measure the perimeter of the building and determine how much starter I need. Sill trim, if that's what it is that I need. With that said, next week, here she comes. LP Smart Side versus James Hardy Fiber Cement Board. And we are going to do a test and you're going to notice something and I'm going to just show you and I'm going to let you guys decide which product is better for absorbing moisture and which one is better for protecting your home. You're not going to want to miss it. I promise you, you're not going to want to miss it. Uh, if there's something that you have more questions on related to steel siding, please post them down below. Ask questions. That's what we're here for. We're here to help and answer them to the best of our ability. If I don't have the answer, I assure you, I will get the answer and you will be notified. With that said, you guys have a fantastic evening. God bless you all and we'll see you next week. Bye now.